Hey, welcome to the Expectant Knitter Plus One video podcast. I am your host, Steph, and this is episode 20. Feel like a mom? Yeah, it's definitely one of those days where I feel like a mom. <laughs> uh, it is Sunday when I'm recording. I have It's day three, home with Roland, and he is just amazing. He's sitting up on his own, unassisted now. Still not crawling, but he sits and he plays and blah blah blah, blowing bubbles and says mum, mum 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 nonstop. So uh, it's just like, okay, this is my world. And one of our friends came over for dinner last night and we had seen her pretty recently and it was like, really, what's been going on in my world? What do I have to talk about? Roland. <laughs> so yeah. And I'd like to get this hat that I'm working on to the end of the row, so I'm just going to knit here a little bit while I talk to you. Uh, what else is going on? Well, I can tell you that, you know, the socks I was working on for Roland, I'm still working on them, but the olive green stretchy ones that I really hate the color, it occurred to me that I'm having a really hard time getting through those. I finished the first one and have stalled out on casting on the second one. And part of the reason I'm having such a hard time with those is that I don't like the yarn and it's super boring, just two by two rib. So maybe if I really want to complete my goal of knitting 12 pairs of socks for other people, I need to make sure that those 12 pairs of socks are with yarns that I like or with interesting patterns, something that's going to make me want to keep working on them. So just one thought I had about those. So. First one's done, I'm not going to show it to you, just because, whatever, it's a baby sock. I'll show them to you when they're finished. <laughs> so, um, right now, this that I am working on, I decided to have a little race with myself. Um, I cast on two hats for Roland at the same time. One top down, one brim up. So one, th this was the top down one, in case you can't tell. And... Um, <laughs> I think I mentioned last week that I worked on this while listening to The Hunger Games and it made me just, it didn't make me happy, this hat, and I knit it too big, and so I frogged it and started again. Well, apparently I still knit it too big, but I'm going to go with it, and I decided to do just a massive amount of ribbing at the end, so it'll fold over and that'll cinch it in around his head, and the uh, top part of it can be a little bulky and a little loose. That's fine with me. So. This will be a folded up room when I'm done. I probably have half an inch to go, but he's asleep right now. And so rather than trying to finish this so that I can show you an FO, I decided to record. So that's about where we're at right now. And it's so cute on because it's too big. <laughs> Very few things are too big for his head. But um, yeah, and I worked on this. Thanks for all the advice, ladies. I did end up going to see The Hunger Games and really enjoyed it. It was great. The last time I saw a movie, um, I was pregnant. So it's been a long time since I've been to the movies and had a great time with my mom and my aunt and my cousin. So really enjoyed it. So this is the first of my two April hats. So yeah, I cast on two hats and then I was like, they're going to stall out. I know me. I don't have a lot of interest in knitting boring baby things like seriously it's not super cute a lot of the boy stuff is just blah if it were pink or red i'd probably go crazy for it but so that's how far that one is and i decided that i would try and race myself and get them both finished and see which hat i finish first um by the end of april so then this is the second one so 10 fewer stitches that's it and it's just so much smaller around it's it's the effect of the ribbing i guess that it just it just seems so much smaller. Ribbing versus straight stocking up. Oh, and this is Patton's Croy. I'm a little scattered. I'm sorry about that. Patton's Croy effects. And I think it's clover. Something clover colors. It's, it's on my project page, what color it is. And I think it's on the show notes, too. And then this one is Patton's Croy stripes. Um, they're Croy sock yarn. It's meant to be a sock yarn. It's more of a sport weight yarn. And, my opinion, but um, I really like it. It's great for knitting on size threes. No, this is a two. 
this one's on a two, and this one was on a three. That's the other reason why. Ten more stitches, and it's on a three. And this one has all the ribbing. Um, I, I put this on Roland when it was just basically a headband, like two inches, and so it snapped a picture of him. It's on my project page. And it makes me think of, like, Rocky or those 80s sports training movies. So that's my Rocky hat. So the, that one is definitely not going as fast, but I'm also not doing this big giant brim fold up brim on it. It's just going to be um, the ribbing. And I started off with about an inch of 2 by 2 ribbing and then for the base of the hat I'm doing 2 by 6 6 knits, 2 pearls, just so it cinches in a little bit around his head. So, and that's how that's at. I think I, I have, I know I have 4 and a quarter inches on this one. And so I'm going to do another inch, inch and a half and then start the decreases. Dun, dun, dun. So those are the hats that I'm working on. Oh, and the um, I actually ran out of the croix. I finished it off. Yay! I had it was like, uh, let's use up this little leftover ball from the sweater I had knit for Roland. And so I ran out. Where's my end? Way down here. I, I finished with that skein. And if yeah, it wasn't so big, it probably would have been enough for a hat. But I looked in my stash and I have. Fortissima color. It's a shoulder and stall. The Sokka color. I had this yarn that I had bought for a pair of socks for my mom. It's very autumnal. Um, it's not exactly the same, but you tell me, right? Can you tell where the switch happened? I don't think so. So I think it'll be fine. It's close enough, and I love that this looks like hand spun. It's got the barber pole gradient effect to it, both barber polling and gradients about it. So, so that's where that one's at. Okay. Um, toothy show. So I talked about wanting to knit a monster out of the Rebecca Danger book for Roland. I cast on using size sevens, I believe. And I was like, this is too big. Like his toys are generally little smaller that are about the size of my hand for his stuffed animals and that's good he can wheel them around so I decided I would cast on again for a toothy joe using sport weight fingering weight yarn and size two needles and I'm doing the toothy joe because as you may know my little guy got his first the bottom two teeth but that's it. So my Toothy Joe, instead of having one, is going to have two in the center. And instead of Toothy Joe, it's going to be Toothy Row. <laughs> so that's what I'm, I started. Um, I'm going to take, I was watching Knit One Heart 2, and Wendy was saying that you can cut out a lot of the seaming in the monster patterns. And so I tried to do some of that myself. So um, for this one, instead of knitting around and then seaming up the bottom later, I picked up stitches and just kept going. So the bottom is the contrasting color in green. That is a uh, J Knits, I don't remember, Maine, I think is the colorway. And then the other color for the body, sorry I'm mid-row here, and I'll show you the back, that would be easier to see. The other color is the three use twisted in fiber striping yarn that is um it's the tweedles colorway i knit a pair of socks for my mom for christmas with this yarn and it's awesome it's like that fire red is amazing so it's like a very electric blue uh amber color and then fire red and so i'm striped i don't have enough i know i don't have enough of that so i'm striping in some of the green just to make the the body so far so here we go I think it's turning out really great. So, yay! And it should be a good size. I, I'm i going to say it's like half again as big on the body. So, I'm planning on inserting some... I'm not going to do waist yarn, but I'm going to put the locks, the stitch marker lock things, where I want the armholes to go, like around the... Or not armholes, but where I want the arms to go around the three stitches, and then I'll pick up on both sides of that and do them as I cords down from that. And then the body, I'm also at uh, the body, the legs, I'm going to pick up along the bottom edge, whichever side is the front. 
I think it's this side. I'll pick up stitches along there rather than doing all the seaming. When I did the Louis the Love Bot, that was, I really didn't like how messy my seams on the legs turned out. So the arms are okay, but the legs were not great. And I think if I pick up stitches and then knit them, it will be more secure because this is going to be a little boy with his toy and he's going to pull on the arms and legs. I think that will be more secure than me seaming them up. So that's what I'm going to do. And I just got really scared that I'm not recording, so I'm just going to talk. You know, if you're going to take the time to sit down and talk to yourself for a while, you really want to make sure the camera's on so other people can laugh at you talking to yourself. So <laughs> that's my toothy joke. Oh, and they're knit on U.S. size 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needles. So it's good tight fabric, good dense fabric. So you may notice that I am wearing my Simmerdim. So this is, it's all blocked. This is Socks That Rock in the January 1 colorway. If I hold it back, can you see? Yes. I really like it. So I know last time I spoke about that I wouldn't knit this pattern again. After it blocked and it just like this lattice bit at the bottom opened up and it's amazing and I love it. It's so drapey. It's really nice. So a lot of um, thinking about my flamboyant, which that might be about the yarn choice. Uh, my flamboyant is a really heavy shawl that was knit with caper sock. Um, I knit a springtime bandit with socks that rock. I don't know if it was light or medium weight. But that's another one that it's sort of heavy. It's, um, I think the using size 10 needles made for very drapey fabric. And then all the wet, the yarn overs just make it even more flowy and light. So I really like it now. So I'm wearing it for y'all. Yeah, and Steve was laughing at me the other day. It's like, okay, is this part of your uniform that you wear a shawl every day? It's like, yeah, it's my style now. I'm rocking the shawls. If I'm going to knit them, I'm going to rock them. Um, I had set as one of my goals for 2012 to knit 12 shawls, as you may remember. So this is my second finished one. And I have three others on the needles. And I realized today that if I finished all three of those by May, I'd be back on track to do one a month for the rest of the year and get all 12 done. So I'm definitely ahead on that of my four goals. That's the one that I'm most likely to complete. <laughs> so what three shells do I have on the needles, you ask? Well, you know, I'm working on the Age of Brass and Steam, which is a stock in a zombie slog, and I go on fits and starts of, oh, let me knit five inches. Okay, now I'm bored. So that's just slowly chugging along. But this back. <laughs> Last week, we I spoke about wanting to cast on <laughs> um, with the Alicia Goes Around Panoply this gorgeous green yarn that I have. And thanks to Melody Mel Melchrist, she pushed me over the edge. I cast on the Maluka. So that is, oh, let me move my thing. The shawl right here. Um, I, it's one of those, like, I looked at people's projects on Ravelry and thought it was a beautiful pattern. Did not read the construction until I cast it on and then went, oh. So, um, the construction on this is you do the edging first and then you pick up and do the stock in it portion. So every roll was patterning and it's this little bit of business right here. It's not a lot to work on at once, but I have to be paying attention every time I work on it. So I can see this one's going to be a little bit slow for me to finish, but I'm loving it so far. I think it's really pretty. Um, and of course the Alicia goes around that green. Can you see the variegation in it? It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Actually, it will go this way on the shawl because this is the edge that hangs down. Does this one look longer to you? It looks longer to me. Huh. Hello, blocking. <laughs> but, um, so, so far I've done four of the pattern repeats and I need to do 33. So it's wee tiny, wee tiny, but it's going lovely. Yep, one night this week, Steve went to visit his, well, one day, he went to visit his parents, he and Roland, they left at six hours to get there, well, six hours round trip. So they left at like 
7 in the morning and got home at 10 at night. So I had a whole evening to myself. It's so weird. I came home and I was like, all right, new book, because I had finished The Hunger Games. Well, the series. New book, new knitting, like cast on, let's go. So, and I am, uh, not to give away the pattern, although I think it's a free pattern, but I did go through and color all my coating, so that makes it so much easier. I don't know about how many of you out there knit a lot of lace, but it's so much easier when you have a chart that you've like colored them because I don't know, the symbols, black and white. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just like colors, but I do so much better when I have it colored. So I was, I was like trudging through the mud trying to do this, sitting out in the backyard in a nice sunny day, evening. And I was like, go color it. So I got, grabbed some of these highlighters, colored up my, and then it flipped. Then it was so much faster and I was able to do much more. So it was fun. And I started listening to uh, the second book, I think they're all called the, oh no, the, they're the Prydain Chronicles by Lloyd Alexander. They're, it's it's an old school children's book from my childhood. So I'm listening to book three, which is, no, the book of three, which is the second book in the series. So, and I'm listening to it while I work on this. So they go hand in hand, hand in hand. Hey, I'd like some advice. Maybe you guys can give me some. Um, Okay, this week's drawing, yep, <laughs> thinking on the fly. So for this week, for the prize drawing, we have a skein of Highland Handmade, Sh Highland Handmade Sugar Make Bowl Sock Yarn in the Agir, Agar, Agar colorway, 75% uh, superwash, 25% nylon, 425 yards, machine wash line dry. It's this beautiful teal blue color. It's variegated yarn. So, for this week, leave a comment on the prize thread recommending a happy book to me. So, what is something that you've read recently or not that whenever you think about it, it just makes you happy? Because The Hunger Games dragged me down really low and I want to read something happy next. So, give me your advice. Because it was so much fun with everybody listing out their cult movies or their the cult TV shows or their favorite TV shows. I don't have the iPad. <laughs> I loved going in and reading that thread and there were so many that people listed that I was like, oh yeah, that was huge. That was huge back in the day. Let me go get the iPad and we'll do the prize. Hey, I'm back. All right. So there were, nope, not the one I want. 60 entries into the Buckingham Yarn Prize Drawing. So I am at random.org. Numbers 1 through 60. I'm going to hit generate. The winner is number 43. So if I hop back to the prize thread, the drawing thread. And some of them I couldn't resist and I had to comment. So if it's me, I do not want <laughs> Just so we're all clear on that. I am not eligible for my own prize drawing. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I say that because of these names. Okay, so number 43 is RS, I, RSR Instructor. RSR Instructor. Who said... Being in the, quote, com visitor vendor cat category, so she goes to the Comic-Con, I see a lot of costumes, some from the past and some from more recent shows that are beginning to have a cult television following. At least, I always see someone covered head to toe in paint with or without fangs. <laughs> so here are her list of five. Number one, Star Trek is always a front runner. Number two, Star Wars, a tie for number one. Number three, any Japanese anime from the 80s. Number four, Venture Brothers, which is gaining popularity. I know Steve has watched that or made jokes about that, but I'm not, I have no idea about anything about the Venture Brothers. And then number five, Futurama, yay! So, RSR Instructor, I'm just going to see what your first name is. You don't have a first name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Send me a PM on Ravelry and I will get this Buckingham yarn in the mail to you. 
and maybe you'll have a great idea about what to knit with it and I'll want to use mine for the same thing. So, there you go. That's this week's prize drawing. But I still have more on the needles because you're thinking to yourself, Stephanie, you said three shawls. And we know you have the Age of Brass and Steam, which is in the Dreaming Color. And we know you have the Maluka. What's the other one? Well, I was waiting for people to get back to me with their opinions or... No, I know what it was. I was watching 90% Knitting and Lisa showed her Serrated, which is by Megan Williams of Stuck Knit Zombie fame. And I thought it was the it was absolutely beautiful. So I went and got it immediately. And I love the fact that she does the triangle and the half hex. You have two choices of which way to knit the pattern. I've never done a half hex before, so I was like, ooh, let me add it. And knowing that Megan is, she's um, just run knit over on, on Ravelry. That's her avatar. Uh, she is a huge Madeline Tosh fan. So I was like, all right, well, I have Madeline Tosh. I've never used it, but it seems like a great homage to Mrs. Williams if I do that. So her pattern with Madeline Tosh in the Madeline Tosh Merino Light in the Thicket colorway. I'm knitting on US size sixes. And let's see if I can spread out. I, for some reason, only have short um, or knit picks cords. So you never really get to see my knitting all spread out well. But there's one section of it so far. So it's going really well. I love it. There's like eight, ten rows of, oh, the dryer just buzzed. Eight or ten rows of patterning where you have to think. And then there's this section of stocking it where you get to rest a little bit and watch TV and talk to people while you're knitting. And then <laughs> there's a section where you watch a podcast and you focus on your patterning. And then there's a social section. It's great. It's a great mix. <laughs> it's a good pattern. So um, if you're looking for a half a hex or a triangular lace pattern, I highly recommend this. Serrated. I have to say that I am very disappointed in myself for buying yarn. Well, you know. So I have a rule that I can't, if I buy skinny yarn, I can't, no matter how beautiful the colors are, other colors are, hey, I'm wearing my glasses. Yes, this is how 99% of the world sees me with glasses on, but I usually take them off when I record. Anyways, if I buy any yarn and until I knit with it and know how it will respond, I am not allowed to buy another skein, no matter how much, how beautiful I think it is, right? Because I've been burned in the past. So I have three, two or three skeins of Madeline Tosh, and I've never knit with it before. I did not realize, let me just see here. It's a single ply yarn. Um, I've had really bad experience with the Malbrigo single ply yarn. That, I think that's the only single ply yarn I've ever knit with. The, I think it's their straight up worsted, the non superwash, <clears throat> the old school one. That's actually what caused me to make the rule because every time I saw it, I would buy it, buy it, buy it until I had like 20 skeins of the stuff. And once I started knitting with it, I knit a beautiful pair of mittens with all this gorgeous patterning in this great green color. They're called my Joomba mittens. Maybe I'll link them. Anyways. Um, every single time I wore them, I would have these nasty pills all over them and they were a mess and I had, was constantly using my sweater stone on them and so then I was just getting rid of the Malbrigo as fast as I could online selling it to people because it was like this stuff doesn't work and I knit something else. I knit a, um, a cowl, same thing, pilly mess. I just didn't agree with me. Maybe other people have had better luck with it but I don't do well with the single play yarn. And so I am very afraid of how this bad boy is going to wear. I might have to be treating it very tenderly so that it doesn't pill. And then again, maybe it won't pill, but size sixes with a fingering weight yarn means it's going to be loose, the fabric. I don't know. It's not pilling in my bag, so that's a good sign because I keep putting it in and taking it out. And if something's going to pill, you can start to see it getting the halo on it early on. And I haven't seen it yet. So cross your fingers and let's hope that this all works out for me. But in the meantime, I will not be buying any more Madeline Tosh light <laughs> until I've worn this for a while. So um, there are four sections of 
you repeat the pattern four times on this and I've done three of them so this has gotten the majority of my knitting time this week I've been buzzing right through it I don't know how well you can see it's a very dark purple like almost an ink color that's how I would describe it but it's beautiful and I like it and it's for me so that is my third shawl by definitely going to be the first one of the three that are on the needles first one finished so that is my knitting for this week. Um, I don't want to be anticlimactic, so I'm going to throw this in here now. We don't have any birthday drawings this week. Did one last week for the month of April. The Plus One Fellows, the membership drawing, we are at 528 members, so when we get a few more people and get over the 550 line, we'll do another drawing. Um, that's it for drawing, so I just want to share with you a little bit of my new yarn. <laughs> so I joined the Into the Whirl Yarn Club, not the Fiber Club, the Yarn Club. So here's a spoiler alert. If you haven't received yours, you don't want to look because it is absolutely beautiful. So the, f the reason I joined it was that it's Firefly themed right now. And my first game came, I think I just heard one on the monitor, so we might be wrapping this up kind of fast. So my first game came, and it is called Serenity. It is stunning. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, I've seen other podcasters hold up their fiber and maybe once in a while their yarn. I don't think I've ever been so pleased with a club yarn in my life. Like, it, I, it doesn't look as good as it is in person. Like, amazing. I am absolutely in love with this yarn. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but it's gorgeous. And I tend to hate, like, natural colored sections on yarn. No, it makes it. It makes it. It just pulls it all together. It's gorgeous. Yay! So excited. <laughs> So, because yarn clubs are new to me. I have never been in one until this January, and I joined two. So, this is the first gain of club yarn that I'm just blown away by. So, that's that. I also was cruising around Etsy. This is a while ago. I did not recently buy this. I bought this like a month ago, but I haven't had a good spot timing-wise to show it to y'all. So, I'm showing it now. Um, I was cruising around Etsy, and I found color for... Pho color phobia. <laughs> Don't you love how I spell out the words too? Yeah. Uh, color phobia Etsy.com. There's her card. Hopefully you can see that. And I can also do. Um, uh, she does the MCN base, the merino nylon cashmere that I am so madly in love with. And I saw this colorway and red's my Red or teal? I'm not sure. I get confused. Um, I saw this. Mmm. Smells like it's a beautiful vinegar. <laughs> and it's stuck on my ring. Anyways, I saw this colorway, which is like a blood red cherry. Gorgeous. What does she call it? She calls it cherry chocolate mash. Um, I saw this colorway, and I knew it had to be a shawl for me. That it would just be gorgeous. So. Um, I ordered this and but this was not the reason why I placed the order you know if you're gonna order something you might as well order two things is my philosophy because you're paying for shipping so just get two things so this was my second one my first reason I got it was the um, LE Highlander spring jeans so this is a self striping yarn plot in the MCN base plus a skein of contrasting heel toe yarn. And so this yarn is, um, it's navy blue stripes mixed in with variegated sections of pastel yellow and peach and pale green. And I really like it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Socks for me. So I have one pair of cashmere socks that are knit out of the String Theory caper sock. And they are a Wendy Johnson pattern. And I don't wear them. <laughs> they were, I felt like they were too special when I knit them. But it's a different world now. It's like four years later and 
MCM doesn't seem as special to me as it once did. So maybe I will knit these up and put them on my feet. But then if I knit them up and put them on my feet, then they don't count as socks for someone else. So maybe I'll knit them for Roland and use the rest for short socks for me. I don't know. We'll see. But that's my new yarn that came in the mail this week. So I'm a happy girl. And it is a rainy Sunday, but that's okay because we needed some rain. And I hope you are enjoying your knitting and doing the, the concentrated lace section while you, you listen to podcasts, not doing the social knitting. <laughs> Have a great week, and I will catch you again. Man, so, so awkward. <laughs> I will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. If you're new, thanks for joining me. Come over and chat on the raft boards. You can find show notes on the blog. Um, knitting Samurai plus one dot blogspot dot com. Haven't said that in a while. And I am Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry if you want to be friends. So, of course you want to be friends. I'm going to be your friend. All right. Have a good week. Have a good, good April. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Rolling. What do you say? Yeah. Mum, 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 mum. What do you think? Oh, fade the black.